How's everybody doing? Hey, Coach. Good. Ready to address whatever you got for me. So, Stan, you know, usually this is the part where you sit up here and say, my guys, we're all ready to play a game. We've been hitting against each other so much. I wonder if that's the case, or maybe, you know, maybe you'd love a few more days to get ready for this one. That's what the head coaches do. They, they come up here and start making those predictions. Uh, well, I'm still learning that piece. Uh, I'm pretty optimistic. You know, we're, we're going to take it, you know, one day at a time. We still, we bank these days, right? We, we, we got work to do. Um, you know, uh, our kids are out there, you know, uh, practicing the game plan for the first time that, you know, we're not practicing the whole entire playbook. We're a lot more <coughs> specific with our <clears throat> our mindset from, from a scheme standpoint, locked in on Duke, you know, so I'm, I'm actually having a, a ball out there, you know, we're, we're making mistakes and, you know, we're fixing mistakes and, you know, but there there isn't a lack of effort. So as far as energy, you know, and, uh, you know, effort and intent. Uh, yeah, we're, you can tell we're in the game week. You know, our players are definitely showing that they're, they're ready to play some football. You know, uh, to sit there and say that we're completely ready to go, no, you know, the, the beauty of preparation, it, it doesn't stop to the foot hits the ball, you know, so we're, we're gonna take that approach and, and be ready to go when the foot hits the ball. Uh, Duke named their uh, quarterback yesterday, uh, Riley Leonard. What do you, you know, what do you see him? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, he's a, uh, he, he, he's a, a very cool, collective quarterback. I mean, I, you know, just watching the spring game and, you know, uh, there's not a whole lot for me to go back on right now, but, uh, you know, he's cool under pressure. You know, he delivers an accurate football. Um, he's really good at the back shoulder throw down the field. You know, he hits that regular basis so um, and he can, he's got uh, enough to you know with his legs that you know you got to be prepared for him tucking the ball and running the ball I mean they, they, they have a read offense at times and they're inside his own package and you know he's not afraid to run the football so we've got to be prepared for everything he brings to the table. Coach looking at the depth chart uh, what went into McMurray and Clark getting the start corner spot? Yeah they earned it they went out there and earned it every day, you know, and, uh, you know, it's their job to keep it. You know, they, they can't slip a day. You know, we got guys that are breathing down their necks, uh, getting better every single day. And again, the way we're built here at Temple is um, you compete every single day for playing time, you know, and uh, right now they've been the most consistent. You know, <coughs> not at any given point can they relax. You know, those guys that are listed behind them, uh, have put in some really good work and they're itching to play just as much as they are, you know. So, you know, we, we keep that pretty fluid around here. Coach, uh, you know, looking at the Jeffrey Kessel, you guys, you know, coming in starting with Jacob Harlan, Stray Thomas, uh, Elijah Dorego, what did you see them, you know, from the first year in the offseason for them that made you feel comfortable, you know, as starters? Yeah, Trey Thomas is a guy who just a, you know, football junkie. You know, he, he comes in here, he puts in the work both on and off the football field. Uh, he plays with a purpose, you know, he takes advantage of the opportunities that are given to him every single day. Uh, very physical. Um, and again, you know, a guy coming from, from junior college, you know, it's not like he hadn't been on a stage before. So he plays with a little bit of maturity about him, you know, but uh, he has great instincts and, uh, you know, we feel like he's ready to go. So he's, he's earned that spot and he's got to keep it. How about tight end position? Um, I'm just curious how you sort of feel you came out of camp and preseason at that position, and particularly is DMR, is he healthy, ready to go this week? Yeah, you know, we're working on, on DMR's health, you know, but uh, he's a guy who obviously, you know, uh, I think very highly of him as a football player, and he's extremely intelligent. And uh, But, we, you know, some things that, you know, we'll make some game day decisions on, on DMR, but, you uh, you know, that tight end room, for the most part, has been solid uh, from the moment we got here. And they've gotten better in spots. And, you know, we're just really starting to settle in to the, to the role for this particular game plan for Duke and where these guys will fit. And uh, so, you know, what you see necessarily in the depth chart is, is, is just names. Those guys are going to play, um, depending on what package we roll out there, you know, um, what personnel group we roll out there can really have an effect on you know, who starts. At corner, 
Kimber or Keyshawn and Cam still very much in the mix, or did they kind of get lapped a little bit by some of the newer guys? Oh, they're very much in the mix. You know, obviously Cam is coming off of a pretty significant injury uh, in the spring, you know, but um, he's, he's back and he's ready, you know, and uh, you, you will see Cam on the field, you know, but um, no, it's just who's been the most consistent, right? And um, sometimes injury does play a, a little bit of a part in that, but um, it's not like I don't feel he's not ready to go. He is absolutely ready to go. A very sharp, uh, smart football player, and uh, he brings versatility to that DP room. So. Yeah, he'll play for sure. That's what I was going to ask. So he is, he's fully ready to go? Absolutely. Adonka Sanders coming in and being named, you know, single digit in the starting spot. What have you seen from him in the short span of time he's been here? I'm sorry to hear the name. Adonka Sanders? Yeah. Um, how has he kind of clicked with that group in particular? And what have you seen from him? Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a bulldog. He's, he's a man about his business every single day. You know, he, he really raised the standard for everybody in that room how he goes about practice. You know, he brings the game to practice and that's ultimately what you want out of your football players. And part of the reason why he's a single digit, he just outworks, you know, uh, everybody in that room. But in saying that he has raised, he has risen the level of play in everybody in that room. And, um, you know, he's just a great example for those guys on a daily basis of how to go about the business, uh, both on and off the football field, you know. So that's the reason why he's a single digit. I wonder about the middle of that offensive line. You're going to have three guys in there. Quarshie's never started a game at center, and your two guards have never played. You know, how do you feel? Those guys, I guess, jumped up, but how, how ready are they? You know, I've never been a head coach, you know, so we all got to figure it out, right? <laughs> you know, and I'm, I'm excited for the for, for the opportunity that, you know, those guys have to, to prove, uh, you know, why they're in those starting positions right now. You know, we, we all have an opportunity to, to go out here and, uh, show the type of work we've been putting in in the off season. So I'm excited for those guys. They're ready to go. When when did, I mean, James Famineau coming in summer, you know, was it, did he click that fast? And Jermaine Donaldson is, I don't know, he's kind of been buried here for a couple of years. It was sort of like, you know, he's on the roster, but. Right. So so James is a guy who obviously, you know, when you, when you see him walk through the door physically, you, you can tell he's, you know, he's not a freshman by any stretch. I mean, he's very well developed physically. Uh, good athlete, you know, can run, you know, there are some things that um, that was put on his plate early that he struggled with in regards to the, the, the system, you know, he had to figure that piece of it out. And uh, again, now that we've kind of, you know, took a little bit off of their plate and got more into game plan specific type things, you know, uh, he has proven his worth. Uh, that he's going to be ready to play against Duke. So we're, we're excited about him. And who, who was the other uh, one? Jermaine Donaldson. Yeah, Jermaine Donaldson, you know, uh, very athletic football player there. You know, good size, good strength. You know, our strength coaches have done a very phenomenal job uh, with his development in the offseason. So um, he's a guy who's starting to put it all together, you know, play by play. And uh, again, you know, those guys uh, have earned their right. Could you talk about just the importance of getting off to a good start to the year, especially with the adversity of playing a road ACC game to start the year? Yeah, you know, um, this is for us, you know, we're, we're going into a game situation for the first time together, right? And we're, we're, we have a lot to learn together in that respect. You know, uh, our time together has been on the practice field. We've been playing against Temple every day, you know. So I think it's more important for us to get into a game-like situation where we're playing against an opponent, you know, in their backyard and, and to see how we respond and how to handle that type of adversity, you know, uh, as a culture, you know, we, we believe in, you know, uh, worry really only about us, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, no disrespect to Duke, you know, uh, we have to we have to play Temple and we have to make sure that we can handle us, you know. So along with that comes the emotional swings and, you know, uh, you know, when things go our way, how do we handle success when things don't go our way? How do we handle that? And can we keep it going one play at a time? And these are things that we need to learn from one another. So it's really important in that respect that we, you know, continue to grow as a football family in a game atmosphere. So I'm really looking forward to that. Coach, is there any position group that you've seen, you know, studying Duke this week uh, that you want to kind of stand out to on the team? Um, I'll tell you, um, I, again, I, I like the, the leadership that we have on the O-line with Isaac and, and Adam Klein. Um, our, our defensive line has really been consistently putting in, you know, good production 
practice after practice since, since spring. Uh, I'm excited to see our, our back end play, our safeties and our, and our corners. You know, um, uh, we have a really good system that fits their skill set and uh, they've really bought into what Coach Elliott is coaching over there. So uh, defensively as a whole, I'm, I'm really excited to see what that looks like. And, uh, you know, our running backs, I think it's a group who has really improved, uh, especially this, this fall camp. I think they've made some strides. And with the addition of uh, Jakari Norwood, he, he's, he's brought a, another dimension to that group. So uh, I'm excited to see. I guess I was more than just one, but yeah, I'm excited to see the team play. I mean, do, do you feel like he just got overlooked at all in Illinois? Is he just one of those guys? Because you do, you seem very high on him. He's got the speed. I think you've said he runs even harder. Yeah, he you know. contact even better than you thought, but you do seem pretty high on him. Going you know, I don't know what Illinois, you know, um, thought of him. And, uh, you know, disrespect to those coaches of Illinois, I really don't care. You know, what I saw on film was a guy that was going to be a system fit for us. And in talking to him, he has a certain type of maturity that, that we needed to, to enhance that room. And he, he brought the, the competition to the room <coughs> immediately, you know. And he's also, you know, probably 15 pounds heavier than he was at Illinois, you know what I mean? Um, you know, playing at Illinois at 175, now he's currently at 190 for us and, you know, uh, proving himself to be a physical football player, both running the football and protecting quarterback, you know. So uh, for us, we're just, Elated to have him a part of this family, you know, and uh, you know he, he'll play, and I, I really uh, expect him to do well during the course of the season for us. Jalen Seth has been a guy since the spring game that I've really been interested in. He showed some good run stopping in the spring game. I'm guessing that continued over the summer for him to be named one of the starters. Yeah, yeah he's a very physical young man. He's kind of taking on the personality of his coach. I don't know, have you met Coach Smith yet? Not yet, but I'm yeah, he's, he's, he's a bulldog, yeah. you know, and those guys have to breathe and, and and think a certain kind of way when you're in the room with Coach Smith, and he's, you know, embraced that, you know, and it's really enhanced his level of play. And there's been huge jumps from production um, from spring until until now. So he's absolutely earned the right. Um, it didn't come easy. It wasn't given to him. He, he absolutely earned it. And, uh, you know, kudos to him, man. Really bought into everything that Coach Smith brought to the table for him. And what, is, what went into deciding, you know, the seven coaches that would be on the field for game day, and then the three that would be up in the press box? You know, uh, it's it's just a lot of experience. You know, uh, we, we let our coordinators kind of figure it out based on experience and how they want the communication to take place during the course of the game. Um, you know, the coordinators are very very uh, fickle on whose eyes are up delivering information down from the box, you know, to the field. And, you know, obviously um, the, the, your offensive coordinator being a quarterback's coach, you know, wanting to be around those quarterbacks or having the proper person uh, to deliver the message to those quarterbacks for him. You know, so a lot of that stuff goes into play that way. A lot of it is comfort zone and, and experience. You think you'll pl you sort of might play like two waves of defenders on Friday night? Yeah, those guys are going to play. You know, I think if, if we're playing, you know, smart football, you know, especially with the potential of, of Duke, um, you know, being a Temple team, if they kind of take on what, you know, um, Coach John, Johns has done at, at Memphis, then, uh, yeah, we got to be able to, to, to get players on the football field, keep it fresh, and, and that's how we'll play complimentary football. Uh, Rory Bell, did he kind of turn it up when Camden Price yeah, showed up? He, yeah, Rory Bell is going to go into the game as our starting kicker. You know, he's uh, he's earned that right. And, again, like everybody else, he, he just cannot relax because, uh, you know, he's got some good heat behind him. You know, it's a small thing, but uh, you got a long snapper, right, who's been doing it three years here. I don't know that he's had a bad snap, but he's number two here. Did this new guy just yeah. fire it? or? Yeah, you know, you know. Again, it's like every position, you know, they, everyone is evaluated. And I think this is something that, you know, um, as we, you know, have these type of settings and press conferences and all this stuff, you'll learn this about me. Um, yeah, you, you, you know, if they are a starter, they earned it. You know, nothing will ever be given to any player on this roster. And, uh, 
you know, those guys have, have earned it, you know, but no one can relax at any given point in time, at any given point in time. You know, it's just the type of culture that we want uh, to build here. And uh, we want our recruits to even see that as well, that if you're gonna come into this program, you're gonna have to compete. Not only that, but you have the opportunity to earn your job here, regardless of how old or how much experience you've had. If you're the best player here at Temple, we're gonna play the best players. That's what it is. Can you talk a little bit about the Humphreys? I mean, what did you see from Dean Stewart tailing the camp that this year? Yeah, he, he had to get healthy, and now he is healthy. You know, he's got great size. You know, he's uh, very, very, very strong. You know, plays strong through press coverage, plays strong in the zones, uh, very physical uh, receiver that loves to block, you know, and, uh, you know, obviously when we're, you know, of the mindset of, of running the ball and, you know, and uh, controlling the pass game, he's a guy that's a system fit for us. So um, now that he's uh, healthier, um, he definitely has the depth that we need going into a game situation and uh, we expect him to play quite a bit. And he and Stand up linebacker, he plays for safety. Now he's listed an outside linebacker. You talk about his versatility and you know how he can plug and play in some different spots now that he's got experience in you know three different rooms. Yeah, so the the reason why you're able to be so versatile with someone like Naheem is that he's so smart. He's a very smart, savvy football player with great instincts. You know, uh, he loves to run, he loves to hit, he doesn't make a whole lot of mistakes. So when you have a guy like that, and maybe you're working through some personnel groupings, and if you can work through some personnel groupings that take on a different, you know, a personality from a scheme standpoint, but still keep the same people on the field, uh, that, that adds a little bit of a, you know, a, advantage to us, we believe, on defense. So he's just one of those guys. It's not a whole lot of those guys, but he's definitely one of those guys that, can work through uh, all of our packages and not skip a beat. You know, Duke defensively gave up a ton of points last year, but Mike Elko is, you know, Mike Elko, he's known for, what do you think that combination means right off the bat on that side, what you're gonna face? You know, you know defensively, we know, you know, they're an aggressive style of play. You know, there's no doubt they, they like the pressure, you know, uh, they're good at it. Um, you know, uh, you know, sit there and you watch that AM film. Boy, I'm glad I'm not playing against some of those D linemen that he had at, at AM. <laughs> you know, but the personality of how they play. Uh, they play hard, they swarm to the football, and, you know, we got to be on point. You know, we, we've got to be on time in the throw game. You know, we've got to make sure that we uh, are anticipating, you know, the tendencies that have been shown. And, um, and then being prepared to, to respond to the ones that haven't been shown. I'm sure he's going he's gonna to switch it up on us. You know, there's a lot of unknowns there, you know, of what personality he'll bring to the game, but we know there's going to be pressure. We know they're going to lock you man to man, and we know they're going to play hard. We know that. So we just got to stay locked in, focus, try to avoid the, uh, the, the stupid mistakes. We can't shoot ourselves in the foot against a defense that, that we feel that we're going to play in Duke. Speaking of AM, Darvon Hubbard had to see out cold his front sevens every day in practice for a year or two. Have you talked to him about what he's seen through his eyes, seeing those guys every day, and how that can help the rest of the running back from Friday? You know, I haven't. You know, I, I need Darvon to really lock into <laughs> to our our scheme. You know, I mean, he's not. You know, um, although I know he will bring a lot to the table, but I just need his mindset locked in on you know what we're asking him to do as a, as a running back for Temple. First off, season as a head coach, going from position coach. I mean, you had an associate head coach job at Texas, but yeah. how did you feel, you know, this offseason, first time really having to manage the whole team and not focus on one room as much? How yeah, it was it? different. It was different. You know, uh, you know, thank God I got my man, Coach Wither, sitting over there, you know, who has done it before and, uh, you know, a bunch of experience in my assistant coaches and my coordinators who have done it before. And, um, you know, I've had a lot of support that way. You know, but uh, um, it's been it's been rewarding in the sense that uh, you know I can put my own personality on on a program. You know, I've been very fortunate to be around some highly recognized head football, head football coaches in my career, and I've learned a lot. You know, and um, I've been able to put my own personality on Temple, and uh, you know, credit to 
this program, before I even got here, there was already a tradition set in place uh, of, of how our players are expected to play, which fit my personality. So yeah, it, it was different in the sense that, you know, a lot of paper gets pushed in my face, you know, and, uh, you know, I got to manage a, a group of men and a group of supporting staff uh, along with the players. But um, thanks to the support that I have within my staff, I, I, you know, I felt that, I feel that I'm, I'm built for this, you know, and uh, I'm excited about the opportunity. How do you think your emotions are going to be right before kickoff? <laughs> Um, what you'll see is a cool, calm, collective <laughs> game, you know, but no, I mean, you know, I, I'll be fighting my emotions, you know, uh, you know, this, this is something that I've wanted for a long time and um, this is something that people who are close to me, you know, uh, know how um, important this is for me to get an opportunity like this, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I'll be racing, you know, but I, I need to be cool under pressure because this is what I'm asking my players to be. You know, we, we've got to manage the the atmosphere. We've got to manage our emotions. we got to, you know, lock in and, and trust the work that we put in to get ourselves to this opportunity and, and just cut it loose, you know, and uh, that's 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 what I hope that uh, I'm able to do for myself is to keep things on even keel. You've been obviously a part of so many season openers, regardless of what program you're with. How much of how long does it take to kind of help the players manage their emotions in a, in a, in a season opener, whether they're redshirt seniors or true freshmen? How much time does it take to kind of say, to guys, all right, playing with your hair on fire, we love that, but now you got to be settled and focused? Yeah, that's that's something you just deal with and grow no matter where you are. Yeah, there's no doubt. There's no question about that. And that's a great question, you know, because those are things that you try to practice. You know, you try to create. Uh, game-like atmospheres in practice. You try to push their backs against the wall in practice so that you can see what you're going to get, you know, but then you get the game day, right? And, uh, you know, you always learn something new of your players. So, um, you know, I, I kind of put that on our single digits. I put that on our unit leaders. Uh, I put that on our, close, our coaches. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to be checking our coaches in the heat of the battle. You know, I still don't know how they're going to react. You know, so there's a learning process that is there. Uh, we learned a little bit in practice, but you know you're always going to get something, you know, different on game day. And uh, we just have to address it. You know, we have to address it and we got to make sure we keep the main thing the main thing. You know, and that's just us, you know, taking care of each other during the course of the game, no matter what happens. Besides, obviously, a win, what else do you want to take away from this, you know, first game of the season? Grow. I just want us to grow. I want us to, I want us to get better every single play. You know, um, I, I know that it's going to take that growth uh, for us to get to ultimately what we want to become, which is a championship team. You know, so uh, you know, I don't want my players to 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 lock into the main distraction, which is the scoreboard. That is the main distraction. We need to lock into us. You know, make sure we're taking care of each other and we're individually doing our jobs for each other on every single play. You know, and to me, that'll promote growth. I would love to see uh, at some point, um, you know, our players take ownership of that thought process. To me, that would promote growth. You know, so for me, it's all about the growth. You know, we're going to grow uh, with every play, and um, you know, we're going to learn from mistakes. You know, and uh, you know, hopefully, we get to a point where those mistakes become less and less, and and we get ourselves to a championship caliber football team at some point. Stand the task up on approach. Obviously, you guys have been happy with what you've seen from Isaac and Adam, but at Victor and, and Jim, too, what did you see from those guys to, to, again, be where they are on the depth chart right now with the backups there at the back? Yeah, again, they, they you know, again, they, they're under great leadership, you know, and they don't have room to breathe with Isaac and, and Adam as their leaders. They really don't, you know, and, uh, you know, they've embraced that piece. They've allowed themselves to be player-led. Uh, they've allowed Coach Wiesenham to coach them hard. You know, and they're putting in the time and the effort to become better football players. You know, so um, all that being said, that that's gives them an opportunity to be on the travel team and have an opportunity when their number is called uh, to go out there and, and, and try to help us win some ball games. You know, so again, they've been under pressure. Uh, we put them under pressure just like we put anybody else under pressure, and they're getting more and more consistent. You know, um, so. You know, although we know we still have a ways to go with those guys, 
uh, they're definitely warranted being on that team. And when the number is called, I think that they go in the game, then, then we believe in them, their, their, their teammates believe in them, and we expect them to play at a certain level. Okay.